Yes, ma'am. What is your first name? Is Dana. One of the challenges that I have in my own personal development is that I love what you say. I, I want it. When I get challenged, I find it difficult for my heart. How do you get your heart and your brain to be congruent? Thanks. That's a great question. You get your heart and your brain to be congruent the same way you learn to hit a backhand in tennis. The same way you learn how to play a game of chess. The same way you learn how to set your VCR. The same way you learn how to meditate. You do it not just with practice, but you do it with a commitment to it. And when you have a commitment to it, you are raising your energy level. And I'll speak a lot here in this program about energy and energy levels. And very often the reason our heart is not uh, congruent with our thoughts is because we allow ourselves to become immersed in lowered energy fields. And we allow, people say to me so often, what you say sounds great, but you don't know what it's like to be in my family. You don't know what it's like to be around my children. You don't know what it's like where I work. I'm, I'm in a world which is you know, noisy, which is uh, uh, rude, which is filled with hatred and so on. Um, what do I do about that? And I always say, who were the most influential people that ever walked on this planet? And what did they have to teach us? That's what you want to go to. What did Jesus say to us? What did, what did Moses say to us? What did Buddha say? What did Muhammad? These weren't just um, great teachers. These were people who lived at a higher energy field, who sent love in response to hate, who sent joy in response to sadness, who had forgiveness in their hearts as the only thing that they had to give away. You practice that. You practice it, and you stop yourself when you find yourself moving. It's like with the backhand. When you go to hit your backhand, and all of a sudden you hit one, and it goes over the fence, you don't keep doing that. You don't just keep saying, well, I just can't help it. It just keeps going over the... You stop, and you make the correction instantaneously at the moment. In the, in, and if, if you start to practice it uh, before, before long, it doesn't take very long. It's like I told you about the woman who was the prostitute up in Seattle. I mean, she made a decision that she was no longer going to be a victim in her life, and she was no longer going to be, and she was addicted to one of the strongest substances that you, and she changed overnight, and she's never gone back. She made, you know, she made a, a heart connection. And I always say, you know, I repeat the prayer of St. Francis every day, two or three times a day. And when I repeat that prayer, Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Those are seven chapters in Spiritual Solution to Every Problem. And he said, O oh Lord, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be loved as to love, to be understood as to understand. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying to self that we are born to eternal life. I just repeat that, and you, there's such energy in that. Eknath Eswaran taught me about the energy in that prayer. He said, carry it around with you. Carry, carry that around with you. Just keep it in your pocket. I always, it's, it's right here in my pocket. I always have it with me. And the energy is always there. And it's just a, a very subtle kind of reminder. And the other thing I would say to about keeping congruence is to turn it over to something that, is, that you're connected to, but that is higher than the energy of your thoughts. Turn it over to God, in other words. Just turn it over and, and watch and see what happens. <laughs> 